Major breaking news in the Matthew Hoover case in federal court in Jacksonville, Florida. Specifically, as predicted on this channel just a couple days ago, the federal district court judge smacked down the Department of Justice's motion seeking to gag Second Amendment YouTubers and reporters all across this country. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Boxes of Dine, a proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Four Boxes Diner. All right, folks, a couple days ago, I reported on how the United States Department of Justice, a prosecutor that put, uh, so far at least, Matthew Hoover uh, in prison for the auto key card issue, claiming that that piece of metal with some etching on it was not a First Amendment piece of art, was not a tchotchke, was not just a doodle, but was indeed a machine gun under the National Firearms Act. And he has been convicted in front of a jury, and now he is in prison awaiting sentencing, which I think is going to take place on September 6th of this year. In the meantime, a pre-sentence report was prepared by the probation office, which is typical. The probation office works for the United States government, and they prepare what's known as a pre-sentence report to individuals who are going to be sentenced for committing a crime. And this was uh, prepared and given to the defendants. Uh, Matthew Hoover was obviously one of the defendants. This was given to because he's the defendant being sentenced, along with his co-defendant. And Matthew Hoover, apparently, according to all the allegations and claims, uh, gave a copy of his pre-sentence report to the journalist, John Crump, that writes for many places, including Ameland. John Crump, of course, decides to report on this as well he should as a journalist in the Second Amendment gun and public policy space, and that's what Mr. Crump does. This peeves, for no reason, frankly, this irritates, apparently, the Department of Justice that this pre-sentencing report uh, was released by the defendant. By the way, this pre-sentence report is about the defendant, Matthew Hoover. So the idea that Matthew Hoover cannot turn it over to someone when it's all about Matthew Hoover is absurd. Nevertheless, the Department of Justice filed a motion to gag the distribution and dissemination and discussion of this pre-sentencing report, not just by Mr. Hoover, but by other non-parties, such as John Crump. And I flagged this to you last week that Mr. Crump is not a party to this case. The only parties to this case are the defendants, including Matthew Hoover. So one wonders how the court would even conceptually have jurisdiction to do anything to a non-party unless that non-party was served with notice and given an opportunity to be heard on an issue. Nevertheless, the Department of Justice pushed forward with what I consider to be a weak tea, really kind of an absurd motion, to try to gag the public, try to gag journalists and the public from reviewing and disseminating this pre-sentencing report about Matthew Hoover which was what Matthew Hoover turned over, right? Now, again, I told you that this clearly violated the First Amendment. There was there a freedom of speech. It violated the First Amendment associated with the freedom of the press. And there are some very, very, very narrow exceptions in terms of redacting or not turning over a pre-sentencing report. Those tend to be limited to really two situations. Uh, one is if you have information in a pre-sentencing report about a confidential informant that's involved with you know a gang or a criminal gang or something like this, and you don't want the name of the confidential informant to be made public because there may be retribution from gang members against this confidential informant. That's an example uh, where you will, you might redact the name and the information because you don't want the person to be killed by a criminal gang. And the alternative might be if you interviewed violent uh, violent victims of violence uh, committed by the defendant. You wouldn't want those uh, some of those victims uh, that were violently attacked by the defendant may want to uh, remain confidential or whatever, so they don't have, suffer retribution either. But here in this Matthew Hoover case, as best as I can tell, there are no violence victims. This is a malum prohibitum crime. This is an administrative crime at best. This is not any kind of malum in se, which means evil in itself. It's not a murder. It's not a rape. It's not a robbery. It's not a fraud. It's nothing. It's nothing. Um, and set aside the issue, and I keep waiting for someone to explain to me, uh, can you even take one of these key cards and actually make a machine gun, a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle, and can we actually see that start to finish? The ATF is, certainly did not do that, uh, which if I were the judge, I really would have been go gone all over that uh, on ATF. It would have been a very tough, I would have 
set the jury aside and went to let them hear this. But if I was the judge in this case, I would have been very firm on the ATF and said, you need to show me this is really what you say it is. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm not the federal judge down there, so I can't speak to all the issues there. Uh, nevertheless, Matthew Hoover, I'm happy to say, massively won this issue. Uh, according to excellent reporting by The Truth About Guns, a wonderful website. If you don't follow The Truth About Guns, you got to make sure you do it. Most of you, I'm sure, do. Um, been around a long time and do excellent journalistic work. Uh, they reported that the assistant U.S. attorney, Laura Coffer Taylor, has withdrawn her motion to gag a journalist reporting on the auto key card prosecution. That's an article that just came out this morning by Dan Zimmerman. Again, um, an, an excellent reporter there at The Truth About Guns. So again, check them out. Wonderful article. I'll put a link to it down below in this description of this video. Uh, this outcome was also reported by some local papers down there in Florida. But the bottom line is the federal judge, as I predicted, as soon as the Department of Justice came into court, at least according to the reporting, uh, basically says, what are we doing here? What's wrong with you, Department of Justice? This is like a silly argument. There's First Amendment concerns, everything else. Where are you going with this? What, where's the government's interest in preventing this document from getting out into the public? And it appears that the Department of Justice's argument was actually withdrawn once the handwriting was on the wall that the Department of Justice was going to get terribly spanked by the federal judge. So rather than suffer a defeat, uh, which would be an actual court order saying, motion denied, you goofball, which is basically what the order would have said, it appears like that the Department of Justice decided to withdraw the motion so there wouldn't be a ruling on it. On a related note, there was a whole host of Second Amendment uh, YouTubers and journalists who submitted a brief in support of Matthew Hoover and the First Amendment, really, uh, because the government withdrew the motion, the judge says, well, you know, the motion to intervene and argue on behalf of Mr. Crump and the other Second Amendment YouTubers and Second Amendment journalists, um, it's moot, unnecessary, because the Department of Justice has uh, basically withdrawn their motion. They've given up. They've lost. So anyway, that was this is big news. Uh, congratulations to Matthew Hoover and to John Crump and to all those other uh, Second Amendment reporters out there, including those Second Amendment reporters on YouTube. Uh, a great victory for the First Amendment and, of course, by extension, the Second Amendment. So this is all very good news. And again, I'm sure we'll see what happens uh, on September 6th. The only, if I were Matthew Hoover, of course, the one concern you might have, if you're Matthew Hoover specifically, is whether or not the judge might take this into consideration in issuing a sentence because there's a lot of discretion as to how much jail time someone gets, um, things of this nature. So, you know, if I were Matthew Hoover, I might be a little nervous that the judge may not say it, but may use this event of disclosing the pre-sentencing report to journalists. Uh, I could see the judge possibly uh, doing something and increasing the amount of the prison time or the sentence to get Matthew Hoover. I'm not saying that's going to happen or that would be appropriate. It's just one never knows when you're dealing with something with a lot of discretion and judges have a lot of discretion when it comes to these sentencing uh, hearings. And that's why you always want to try to keep the judge kind of on your side, even if you're found guilty, because the judge might be more lenient towards you rather than being harsher towards you. Uh, but nevertheless, a uh, big win today for Matthew Hoover and John Crump and Amal land and the others in the Second Amendment uh, journalistic community. And uh, congratulations to you all. And again, I hope you learned something here today about the First Amendment and uh, we'll keep tracking the Matthew Hoover story. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.